When it comes to roguelike games, or games that contain some roguelike elements, I feel like there are a few elements that really need to be there to keep the player coming back. There needs to be proper incentive to give you reason to push forward and make you want to try that level again. In many single player games, the motivation for the gameplay is presented through its story, and that helps to give the gameplay narrative purpose. The gameplay may be good, but a good story, characters, and storytelling can elevate the action even more. I have said this before, and for roguelikes, I feel like you need to have some sort of reward that you're earning in the long term and in the immediate. Give the player things to grind towards while also providing them with items and boosts that they can find within the dungeons. And let the player take something back with them when they die. Ever since I enjoyed Rogue Legacy, I feel spoiled with how that upgrade system worked. The game may be tough, but you can always bring back gold with you to be able to upgrade many different things. Another good example is the Indie Synthetic, which is a roguelike that focuses on tactical shooting. The sound effects are good, with some nice impact and gunfights that are really engaging. Children of Morta is an action RPG with roguelike elements that contain many of the other elements that I was talking about before. Children of Morta surprised me with its story, narrative, and how it engaged me with its gameplay and progression. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my review for Children of Morta. Children of Morta focuses its gameplay on action RPG dungeon crawling mixed with a good story and a nice variety of characters to choose from. The game starts out with you as the swordsman, and the action is great. It feels satisfying to cut through enemies. Using your abilities to manage the mobs of enemies is really important. Each of the characters have different dodges that they can pull off. The dodge is really useful because it comes with a cooldown, so you need to keep an eye on it, but it also is good to be able to close distance for some of the slower characters and help you get out of the way for some of the weaker ones. The game provides you with several different characters to choose from. As I said, you get the swordsman first, and his skills are focused on armor, and so that he can use his shield to be able to block attacks, and he can still attack while he's blocking. But his stamina bar is tied to his shield, so if you don't have enough stamina, then you cannot do a proper block. Or you can be the archer, and she plays differently as she controls very similar to a twin stick shooter. The characters come down to preference, with each one offering something unique. One of the sons focuses on using daggers. His playstyle is interesting in that he builds himself up into a frenzy as he attacks more. So the more you attack, the faster your attacks are. You're encouraged to keep that frenzy meter high so that you can do the highest amount of damage. Also, you start to consider other enemies a bit differently as you want to focus on the weaker foes to build up your frenzy to be able to take out the larger ones a lot quicker. You also have access to another range fighter with the wizard-like daughter, and another son who is a martial artist. The martial artist was probably my favorite to play as, as he could jump around the map and a lot of his attacks would home in on enemies. The last class that you can be is the eldest son, and he uses a hammer and he's more of the tank-like class, being able to deal a lot of damage but being very slow. Each of the different classes provides you with different ways to fight through the dungeons and has you thinking about your playstyle a bit differently. The different characters do allow for experimentation since they play differently from each other. You may find yourself getting into the flow of one class and then switching to another one to try them out and then you find out that you like this new one better. What I do like is that no matter if you're using a melee or ranged fighter, the controls feel good and the action is always great. Slashing, punching, and shooting enemies is a blast as they break apart or blow up. Since each of the characters are different members of the family, the game tries to incorporate that into the game a bit. Each of the characters will level up as you earn XP from defeated enemies. 
there's different skills and abilities that you can earn through different skill trees that they have. But as you hit a set level, you'll be able to earn these passive perks that affect every member of the family. For example, the Swordsman gives everyone an increase to their max health, so even if you only enjoy playing as two different characters, it's good for you to be able to try out some of the other ones and level them up because their passive perks will help everyone out. When you are in dungeons, you will find many different items and additional moves to help you out. You can pick up additional moves like being able to put a shield around you, healing yourself, or sending a sword down from the sky, setting up a turret, and more. Along with this, you will earn additional buffs that can provide you with allies that will attack enemies for you or even heal you. You can find time boosts as well throughout the dungeon that will improve your stats or you can find these runes that will specifically enhance a particular move. All of these upgrades and items will go away once you complete a dungeon or if you die within the dungeon. And this is where some of the roguelike elements come into play. You can gain all of these useful items on each of your runs and this keeps the action interesting. But when you die, you keep the experience points that you earned along with all the gold that you picked up. The gold is really helpful as it's a way to be able to purchase permanent upgrades that affect every member of the family. These can range from increasing your health, attack power, critical hit chance, and more. And this is an area that I really like in roguelike games. I like that you have plenty of different things that you can grab when you're on a run, but you also can take back the experience and gold with you, even if you die. You never feel like you're wasting your time, and you're always working towards something new or better. There's a large amount of upgrades and the progression keeps you hooked as you want to continually better your characters. Health is another thing to consider within the dungeons as you can only normally heal when an enemy drops a healing potion. But the healing potions do not go away if you don't grab them right away. So you can choose when you want to pick them up in a fight, and the useful map will indicate where health potions are that you forgot to pick up. While in dungeons, it's worth exploring to see everything that you can. The same dungeon will change a little bit as you return back to it. You will occasionally encounter events within the dungeons, and these could be story related like saving a young wolf, or helping out another relative in a mission, or some challenges that involve you defeating waves of enemies, or doing a small puzzle. These bring more variety and freshness to the dungeons, and each of these reward you with experience, money, or an item. Boss fights are what bookend the dungeons, and while they're not the most original fights that you will have, they are pretty fun as they lock you in an arena and you need to fight a big enemy. The game allows you to enjoy the action with a friend in local co-op. The game is roughly the same as single player and in co-op, but there are some differences. The big one is that you can revive your partner, which is a nice bonus since there isn't a way to revive yourself in solo play unless you have a specific item. You can create some fun combinations with each of the different character playstyles. I played some of my co-op with the swordsman and the archer. My friend stayed back and used the archer as I was the swordsman and all the enemies focused on me. There is a small snag that I ran into with co-op. You can only be so far from your partner, so if you die in a spot and there's a trap there, then you really won't be able to be revived, and then essentially you're gonna need to just kill yourself to be able to restart the dungeon. This did happen a few times, and I wish there was a way to just proceed without your partner and have them come back in a dungeon checkpoint. Overall, co-op is a nice addition and it's a lot of fun, but also know too that solo play is great as well. Margaret awoke, startled, a cold sweat clinging to her. She gathered her thoughts. Aged wood creaked, echoing through the quiet rooms. Near the house stood a shrine to Rhea Dana, goddess and daughter of the land, of Rhea and a being of comfort. The story is one area that really surprised me. I knew very little going into this game. I saw the art style and that's what drew me in, but I didn't know what type of game this was and what it was focusing on. I was pleasantly surprised by the narration that greets you at the beginning of the game. In a way, the narrator reminded me a bit of the narrator from Bastion, or as if the developers were inspired by it. 
There's much more story here than I initially expected, and I was pleasantly surprised. This was seen even when I ended up dying in dungeons and returning back to the home, and there would be another short story sequence waiting for me. Some of the best ones were when you get to see these mini arcs when one of the children wants to go out and fight the corruption with the rest of their family. These are small story moments, but it helps for us, the player, to be able to connect with these characters. I found myself getting invested with this family and enjoying the stories that were presented. Sometimes when you return back to the home, there would be these mini story events that would trigger if you want them to, to give you some more insight into the characters. Joey and Mark had not known each other for long. But as happens with some young men their age, a friendly rivalry was already taking shape. Uncle Ben pondered over a map he received from a refugee. The silk caverns were a twisted maze of dead ends and venomous nests. But somewhere along the right path, Anea Dyer, spirit of the Caldipo Caves, rested. I do want to mention a few flaws that I encountered. The big one that I had was how characters would get infected by the corruption as you played as them, which would slowly hurt their stats. I saw this when I kept dying as one character and his max health was decreasing. If you decide to select a different character, then the infected character will slowly get healed and get back to full strength. But this feels like an artificial way to force me to try a different character. I understand that this game wants to include some form of consequence with death, but I think something better could have been done here, because it's just annoying to have to select another character because the game wants me to. My suggestion would be to have two or three characters that you switch between so that you don't need to worry about this as you're switching between them and they'll heal on and off. The other flaw was that some may find the dungeon crawling repetitive as the structure is very similar from level to level. You will encounter new enemies and gain new rewards, but after several hours you will pick up on the familiar structure. The continuous rewards kept me coming back, and while I did feel like it got repetitive at times, I always did want to continue playing. Before we get to the conclusion, I need to praise the great audio presentation within Morda. The narration is great, and so is the soundtrack. There are some great tracks that will stay with you, and here are a few tracks from the game. Overall, I love Children of Morta. The game has a great visual style that is backed up by great gameplay and progression with a really engaging story that I wasn't expecting. In many areas, this game exceeded my initial expectations that I had. Each of the different characters provide a different playstyle and something different that both engages you to try out something new and find someone that really fits your style. You can start the game as a melee fighter, and then you may find yourself switching to a ranged class for some twin stick action. The game really does pack on the rewards with traits that affect all characters, individual level ups, gold to spend on further upgrades, and items to grab within dungeons. An added bonus is that you can enjoy the entire thing in local co-op. The soundtrack and solid narration round out this excellent package. Children of Morta is one of my favorite indies this year, and I would highly recommend you check this one out.